right, good afternoon and welcome to Clayton County Library System Virtual Graphic Novel Club. Uh, my name is Erica and I'm Roland. And today we will be talking about uh, DC Supergirl. Now, um, we are not going to do an extensive coverage of her because we are sort of, but we're not going to go into a lot of her uh, allies and uh, villains. Well, we, we have a lot of villains, but not too many allies because she has a lot and we're only going to be here for an hour. So uh, we're going to jump right into Cora zor -El. All right. So origins of uh, Miss Cora zor -El, a.k.a. Supergirl. Uh, the original Cora Zorel appeared in 1959, created by Otto Bender and designed by Al Plastino. Uh, Kira's original or origin story is kind of like her uh, modern day incarnation. Uh, she was the cousin of Kal El, who was Superman there, and she was the last uh, survivor of the Kryptonian city, Argo City. That was a fragment of the planet that managed to hold together after the original cataclysm that resulted in, uh, you know, when Krypton blew up. <clears throat> when Argo was threatened by a meteor shower, the family launched adolescent's car into a safety in a rocket similar to her cousin that was destined for Earth. Her parents planned for her to be found and raised by her cousin so that they dressed her in a similar um, uniform in, to his in hopes that it would make it easier for him to recognize one of uh, their own. So as you can see, she has the similar S on her chest. That's their um, family crest and everything. Uh, once she was on Earth, she was adopted. She adopted the um, identity of Linda Lee and came to live in Midville Orphanage. I didn't understand that one because really, <laughs> I was like, I, didn't uh, maybe she, yeah, I guess because she was a teenager. I know, but like <laughs> your cousin literally lives in the tropics. But anywho, <laughs> um, and she followed in her cousin's footsteps, maintaining a cover identity and did her best to keep her power secret. Uh, later, Carol Carr was adopted by a human family named the Danvers in 1968. Finally, she began acting as Supergirl officially. And she was introduced to the world by Superman himself. From that point on, Kara was a fixture in the Superman family, sharing along stories and with Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. Uh, this particular Supergirl, as you can see there on the right, uh, sacrificed herself in to save the world in Crisis on Infinite Earth saga. <sighs> she died. So I'm going to move on to the next Supergirl here. Uh, the Next Supergirl is Matrix, uh, AKA her name is also May. She is from a pocket universe, another dimension. Matrix was actually um, in this reality, Lex Luthor is actually a good guy. He's a, he used all of his brainiac scientist things to do good for the world. Um, and in this dimension, uh, three Kryptonian criminals escaped from the Phantom Zone and tried to take over that reality's that Earth, um, that reality's Earth, and so with there was no Superman in this reality. His younger self, Superboy, had died before the criminals escaped, and so Lex Luthor, who didn't hadn't gone bad yet, created um, this particular Supergirl. Uh, she would be the Supergirl that uh, when their world actually ended up dying, like <laughs> the, the guys from the fan zone basically uh, took over Lex Luthor's particular, that particular Earth in this pocket universe. Um, he sent this Supergirl to our uh, Earth Prime. And in Earth Prime, because there was a lack of a Supergirl because she died in Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, she was able to join, she joined uh, the Teen Titans and helped defeat other villains. This Supergirl will lead to Supergirl number three here in 1996. So from 1988 to 1996, Matrix was Supergirl. That introduces us to Linda Danvers. His name sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> that Danvers family from earlier. Uh, Linda 
1996, I actually remember this cover because I actually bought Supergirl number one in 1996 uh, from the bookstore. Um, but she was an uh, ordinary girl raised in middle America somewhere. Um, she was not brave. She was comes from a super religious household. Mm -hmm. And this Linda would have to merge with that matrix in order to save her life. So she witnessed uh, a horrific act of her pastor being abu uh, abusing his wife, but instead of saving the woman's life, she kept it to herself. Uh, due to that, she lost faith in her religion and began dating a boy that led her into a joining a cult. Now oh, we get to talk about cults. Uh, she was, um, he actually lured her to the cult. She was meant to be a human sacrifice, but when the cult uh, used her blood, they did cut her and they like cut her to the point, like she lost so much blood that she was dying uh, to release a particular demon into this world. Supergirl Matrix shows up to save, you know, because this demon has been summoned. So she's like, oh, there's trouble out there. So she goes to save whoever it is is in trouble and she shows up and intervenes. And because of the ritual that was happening, uh, midway through the ritual, um, uh, Linda is dying. So Matrix has shape-shifting powers and tries to sort of, you know, plug the wounds that she has. Like she's trying to, you know, just stop the bleeding basically. In the process with that, she ends up fusing with Linda and Linda and Matrix become the new Supergirl. So Linda there has kind of brown hair, whereas Matrix is blonde and, you know, Supergirl. So you have two different beings in one body and she can be Linda Danvers, brown haired, mousy girl. Then she can transform into Supergirl, blonde, blue eyes, everything. Um, she has the same, like, she has the same power. She's a, uh, she fights crime. And this particular iteration of Supergirl, there was a lot of religious overtones and a lot of satanic worshiping, things like that. And so um, she is from 1996 to about the, the early 2000s. This is Supergirl. Uh, a lot of her storylines dealt with cults, dealt with dem demons, um, like I said, very religious overtones. Um, uh, and she was a she was Supergirl for a short while, but due to her powers and Matrix powers, um, she ends up giving up because she ends up be giving up being Supergirl. Honestly, she's never popped back up in the DCU. Like she um, she's had to face her crimes and not really crimes, but because she was going so hard for demons and. She, she would have been perfect for Justice League Dark had it existed at that time. And we never know. Maybe they may bring her back, that particular Supergirl back, because um, Dr. Dr. Auklet, I believe, is the one who basically showed her what her soul looked like. Mm -hmm. Because she had gotten to the point where she got powers even from like angels. Like she had been no. given that type of power. But she was actually just murdering demons and Sometimes she didn't know the full story of things, so she would mur murder innocent. Uh, oh, innocent beings. Yes, like, <laughs> so uh, and so. Dr. Ockert was like, look, this is what your soul looks like. And he showed her her inner self. Because he was like, you can't be judge, jury, and, and, and all this. And so when, when she did, like, she was, by this time, she was adulthood. So right around 25, 26. And when he showed her that, she basically was like horrified at like, oh my gosh, this is who I've turned into. I'm, I'm out here supposed to be doing good. And she just kind of disappeared. Like she flew, she flew away never to be seen again in DCEU. So um, they could bring her back because she would be perfect for Justice League Dark when you start talking about, especially fighting demons and cults and things like that. But they have not done that yet. But, you know, you never know. Uh, which leads to Supergirl number four, which is Cercel or me, my, Mia. Now, where does that name sound familiar from? There's a um, yeah. character. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And she's... Brainy. 
Oh, okay. Because I was thinking about before he got employment. This dreamers in that dreamers? No, 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 no. No, there was a Mia earlier, and I don't know where she is now in the episodes. But not just from Supergirl, but from the new. I think it's uh, Superman and Lois. Superman and Lois. Isn't their daughter named oh, John my... Henry and? Oh yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So this is Sosa. Okay. She is uh, a time traveling daughter of Clark Kent and Lois Lane. She was brought to the present by an organization called the Future Smiths. Uh, she appeared around 2003. Um, the true nature of her parentage remains up for debate after some tests, but Clark comes to recognize herself as family and worthy of holder of the Supergirl mantle. So she was brought from the past, brought to the, to the past from the distant future. Uh, by the future Smith, and she was eager to meet her father. When the secret plot is coordinated by the mysterious future Smith, uh, it is revealed that she um, is Superman's daughter, and uh, but her mission is secretive. Um, and so she arrives in Metropolis and informs both Lois and Clark that she's their daughter. And she's brought some villains from her time also. <laughs> what they traveled through the wormhole with her. Uh, and then Superman is from there dragged into Cersei's future. And he sees really who the future Smiths are. Future Smith, they're, they're a secret organization. Uh, but it is revealed that the future Smiths is led by a robot hybrid Superman that reigns terror over civilians. Same exact storyline right. as Lois. The event oh, right. the current Superman, Superman and Lois. Lois Adventures, where mm -hmm. that is a dark Superman who has experienced so much loss and so much. He, he rules with an iron fist. Right. And um, so when he sees what he could become in the future, he goes back to the past because he because he's this awful awful person who is uh, attacking civilians and killing people. Um, so he uh, he rescues uh, Sorcell from the future Smiths upon learning of his future, and he takes her back to Metropolis where they run some more DNA tests and find out she is technically his daughter, but she's also a hybrid Kryptonian. So she has his DNA. But she also has human DNA that is not Lois's, but just some human DNA. Right. And uh, she has an alter ego, Mia, who hates superheroes. And so uh, what happens is she gets hit with red sun energies. It bounces her between the two personalities. So she's kind of like the character, the Linda Danvers uh, Matrix. Like she goes back and forth. Right. This Supergirl is still in the DCU. I don't know. If New 52 knocked her out, but she, according to my research, she was still part of the, yeah. the Superman family. Uh, is that her in the black uniform mm -hmm. on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is the Supergirl that is going to be in the Flash, okay. this particular iteration of Supergirl. Okay. Um, there is a fifth Supergirl, but we're not going to get into her today because she could get her own episode, and that's Power Girl. She's from Earth 2. She and uh, she is a more mature Supergirl. Her uh, outfit alone is <laughs> more mature, but she's a little bit older than all the other Supergirls. Like these are mostly teens; they're they're teenagers. Whereas Power Girl is an adult. She's from Earth too. She's best friends with Huntress, mm -hmm. who is Catwoman and Bruce's daughter in that particular Earth. And they fight crime together, and they take no prisoners. <laughs> you can only imagine Huntress right. with a semblance of uh, control and a lot of her uh, mental health intact, to say the least. But those are the Supergirls. And right now, we're sort of back to they rebooted again after New 52 and Future State. So we're back to the Zora Corral. Zara. Um, we're, we're back, back to that original Supergirl, basically. Uh, uh, Kara. 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 And um, 
but these other supergirls are still sort of in the background. But Kara is the one that they are really focused on now. And that is the one that the Supergirl show is based on. These are her powers and abilities. She has the same powers as Superman, incredibly strong, able to dodge bullets, able to fly. She has skin resistant to most man-made weapons until it is dipped in the toxic uh, earth from her home planet, which is kryptonite, and that renders her weak. So that's her fighting uh, robotic Superman there with his half human self. All right, so we'll get into some of her allies. All right, so now, first and foremost, um, we don't even have to get into too much about him, nope. but um, the first ally, Superman, a.k.a. Clark Kent, who is um, Kara's cousin from the planet Krypton. He was sent to, the, he was sent to Earth as a baby, uh, where he landed in Smallville to be raised by John and Martha Kent. Now, you know, he was basically, uh, when they were sent off, mm -hmm. she was sent first mm -hmm. because she was supposed to reach Earth first in order to take care of him. But she got knocked off of, uh, of course. Yes, her, her rocket ship got knocked off course and he ended up landing first. So by the time she lands, she's still a teenager and he's a, he's a grown, grown man. man. And I think that's where a lot of that resentment comes from <laughs> yeah. between them. Oh, yeah, because technically she is older than yeah, him she, she by, by many years. Like mm -hmm. if he was a baby and she was already a teenager, right. she would be his guide. Right. Uh, and yeah, there there is that that age difference thing. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, basically, Superman's powers make him godlike next to all the humans on the planet that he lives on. And but his story is not one of greed or conquest. Instead, he strives to represent the inherent goodness of the human spirit. Yeah, although he's not human, <laughs> and the capacity of every living thing to do right by its neighbors. Yep. Um, Superman's tagline is the symbol of truth, justice, and hope. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and that is one of the reasons Batman does not trust him, or does that Luther. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, uh, right here we have Brainiac 5, aka Girl Box. Uh, now, when you hear Brainiac, you all automatically think, the villain Brainiac, Brainiac 5 is actually good there. Uh, Brainiac was born on Kulu, which is a direct descendant of the original Brainiac and Viral Box II. After centuries of disuse, the title of Brainiac was taken over by Krull's father and eventually given to Krull at the age of 12. He was the fifth to hold the title of Brainiac, making him a breakthrough in science or time travel. That was his thing. And as, as he, when he was in university, as a young boy, thanks to his mentor, Krull was invited to join the Time Institute in Metropolis on Earth. And now, Krull, this Brainiac comes from the 30th century, and uh, we'll get into why that's important later. Uh, he is close friends with a fellow time genius named Ron Rod Peter, and he invented the Time Bowl, which is the primary mode of time travel for He's a member of the Legion of Superheroes, and that's his connection to Supergirl. He was uh, temporarily before Crisis on Infinite Earth. She spent time in the 30th century with these guys, right. yeah, and they're the Legion of Superheroes. Um, while using the Time Viewer to see the dawn of time, the Green Run Accords attacked him, and he was saved by the uniform Legion of Superheroes. He then joined because he was impressed by the team, and they used his code name, Brainiac 5. Um, he tried out with Legion with Supergirl. Uh, they went on to collaborate with first a visible kid, Loud Norm, and to invent the Legion flight rings, those rings that they wear to go from point A to point B. Um, he invented those. And um, Brainiac 5 has a 12th level intelligence. I think he's even smarter than the original Brainiac. Mm -hmm. And he is known as the smartest person in the universe. He lives in the 30th century. And being a member of the Legion of Superheroes, he also has, uh, he creates advanced technology, such as time machines, time cubes, time spheres, uh, the chronix, the flight rings, artificial intelligence, and force shoots. Uh, while 
Physical combat is not something that he excels at. He has been known to use his body in physics and in combat to defend himself and to incapacitate opponents. His uh, advanced intellect presents a challenge when people try to affect him with mental abilities. He just thinks faster than they do. He um, also know, learns new languages and hours of listening and conversation. Um, he excels in using all technology in all forms, but it's not really shown a lot. But he is one of the region's best pilots, and uh, he is able to find weak spots in other people's technology. He can, re he can even regulate his body's automatic nervous features with ease. So unlike the original Burning App, which was a computer, like a <laughs> this guy is, he has, uh, he's a, so a human yes. Um, and um, he and the girl um, dated, and uh, before she went back to her own time and her own death, right before the crisis of infinite earth. They have an on again, off again relationship throughout the DCU. Um, not just him, not just this Supergirl, but all the entities of Supergirl <clears throat> um, outside of Linda Danvers, Matrix, and um, the other uh, Cersei. All right. So our next ally, if you are a big fan of the TV series, you will automatically recognize this character. And we're talking about Kat Grant. Uh, she was once a Daily Planet gossip columnist, and now she is the CEO of an international media corporation. Kat Grant's name is synonymous with ambition. Uh, she gained a reputation for being willing to do just about anything for a story, even if those leads regularly put her at risk and in need of Superman's help, something she rarely appreciated. For Kat, self-reliance has always been key. And the idea that someone may need to swoop in and save the day, well, that's insulting at best. Her eye for a story and innate distrust of the superhero community made her a perfect choice for Lex Luthor's press secretary when he served as president of the United States. It was a job she cherished until Luthor was impeached. Later, Kat was reimagined as a gossip blogger and eventually the CEO of her own company, Catco Worldwide Media a multimedia entertainment and news conglomerate based out of the National City. And yeah. I included her as an ally because of the TV show. Another person that we didn't include was Alex Danvers, but Alex Danvers was never original in the comics, so it was hard to find info on her because she doesn't exist in the comics. Yeah, they, they, what they did on the TV show, they played her that she was the um, she was the sister mm -hmm. or the, the child of Carol uh, Danvers', Carol Danvers um, yeah. adoptive parents. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's how they played her on the TV show, but in the comics, she doesn't exist. Alex Danvers does not exist. Now, there's a character similar to her, mm -hmm. but she doesn't show up in Superman a lot. She shows up a lot in Bat Batwoman. Right, man. She's still part of the DEO. She is. She is the DEO. She's, she's <laughs> taken in by Martian Manhunter, just yeah. as in the storyline, yeah. how they combine the storyline. Yeah. She, now, this particular character, yes, is mm -hmm. the DEO. She is there, the contact. Right. There's another mysterious guy that runs the DEO, but right. she's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman that is not her name is not Alex Danvers, it's something else, and I, it's escaping my memory right now. But yes, so Kat is uh, an ally in that sense, but in the comics, she's not really a fan of superheroes. <laughs> enemies, so let's jump right into these enemies. Lesla Lar, oh gosh, I just love Bronze Age uh, naming of, of superheroes between. DC and Marvel with their, their, oh yeah. Anyway, Leslar, I'm just gonna call her Leslar, uh, was an enemy of, uh, from a Supergirls. Uh, she was a Kryptonian living in the bottle city of Kandor now. Um, Kandor was bottled because of Brainiac. When, and when it broke off, Argo City broke off, uh, Kandar was taken by Brainiac. It was another city in Krypton. In Krypton. He struck it and kept it like a, like a, it was like his Absolutely. test. It was his test project that he had. Um, and when Superman fought, uh, 
Brainiac, he got Candor and kept it in the Fortress of Solitude. Lazar is an orphan that took the surname of her best friend, or five, five Lar. She was a brittle, brilliant scientist that grew jealous of Supergirl. Uh, at the same, and, and that the fame that she had earned when her existence was revealed on Earth, uh, people, uh, she began to, uh, when she was the, when Supergirl was brought to Earth Prime, Lesnar began to try to gain the trust of Lex Luthor to try to kill Super, Superman. This version of Lesnar is including in all the histories and corresponding appearances as it was erased from existence following the collapse of the multiverse between 1985 and 1986 crisis of Infinite Earths limited series. So uh, this version of this character has not appeared recently but she was a big, big between like 50, like 60 through uh, up until the 80s, as you can see by her design here. Um, she was old school. So, uh, but ultimately she was erased. Uh, being a jealous friend was no longer interesting in, in comic world. <laughs> All right. Now we get back to the Brainiac family. Original Brainiac. Now, this is one of the most intelligent beings in the universe. Uh, his genius has been challenged by Superman time and time again. He basically is artificial, an artificial like AI. body that have morphed several times over the decade. So, you know, in the, uh, I think, if you remember back in the 80s mm -hmm. from the Super Friends comics, he was this, I yeah. was he purple? No, he was green. Green, but he's in, in purple underwear yeah. and a yeah. t shirt, yeah. a comic t shirt. <laughs> which was all he, had doing. he was. You know, but he was, he was, he had the, mm -hmm. the mind to take on everybody. Definitely. So, Regardless of his costume, <laughs> his, he had an uncomfortable thirst for absolute knowledge. And regardless of the billions of innocent lives which might be destroyed in the process uh, of him gaining that knowledge, this has made him one of the deadliest villains the universe has ever seen. For Brainiac, the knowledge he acquires is only valuable if he and he alone possesses it and no one else. Thanks to his highly advanced computerized brain, Brainiac is always 10 steps ahead of his opponents, even ones as clever as Superman. Ultimately, his inability to see beyond pure logic has always been his downfall. But like a bad computer virus that can never be fully purged, Brainiac always manages to turn up again when one least expects. Yeah, and I think I think it's the adventures of Superman, but they got they have two a two part episode mm -hmm. uh, that uh, from that. So in the 90s, the cartoon in the 90s, where it explains sort of that background of Brainiac coming to Krypton. Mm -hmm. And basically, he it, it was revealed in that those episodes that he's like the person, even though they knew their planet was dying, he sort of sped up that process right. because he was trying to get their knowledge. Right. And then he caused it to like expedite. Like that's why Superman had to be sent off the way he did. And uh, his parents could not go with him like right. they like it was so it, it was awkward yeah, I that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. all right so another big baddie for supergirl is another baddie for superman uh lex luther he is a egomaniac uh a genius billionaire industrialist like he, he's a scientist he's a businessman he's been president Sounds like one of our recent presidents when, when I read off his his bio here. But um, he, he has a, a never-ending personal and public and political battle against Superman. And because of his hate for Superman, he hates all Kryptonians. Literally, honestly, he actually hates all superheroes, especially aliens, right. because right. he does not trust them, which is nothing wrong with that. Batman doesn't trust him either, but he goes about it a different way. <laughs> Um, he only uses his brilliant mind for selfish gain and further his own bitter vendetta against those he feels has wronged him. He is a notorious sociopath and xenophobe, and in every one of his incarnations, he's been a scientist, like I said, a businessman, a president. He's always used his power to influence, not to help mankind, but to attempt to destroy one 
the one man on the planet who makes him feel insignificant, which is Superman. Uh, to much of the world and his respectable self-made man, and he is like the pinnacle of human achievement because he is self-made, but um, he is an evil person. Uh, to the other superheroes, he is the most dangerous man alive and one of DC's supervillains who is never to be underestimated. So no matter what he says or what he does, you can never trust him. Even when he says he's going to forget of me. I, I was just about to say, let's not forget that he's one of those criminals where, I know growing up back in the day, mm -hmm. um, he was never, he never rolled the line. I think that was something that they did in the 90s or the 2000s yeah. where they started making him decide that he wanted to work for the good of man oh, yeah, no, work no. alongside the heroes. But that was only, you know, that was that only was to a, lead up to his presidential election. Right. Like he just he started teaming up with them so that again people would trust him. Yes. He kind of <laughs> reminds me it's like um like um oh okay for the personal good because we're being invaded by these aliens right. who are bad but as soon as this is over. Like uh, Starro, I think Starro right. was one of the I'm, ones. I'm where, back to myself. <laughs> yeah, Starro had come to Earth, and he was like, "Okay, I'll team up with the good guys," but it, he also at the same time was trying to. Um, <laughs> he was trying to get the technology, the alien right. technology that Starro had, because you know it's mind control, right? For his own, you know, like it's storylines like that you have to love because you're like. Right. Like you can never <laughs> you can never trust Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. And that's in and I think any uh movie that they've done, Lex Luthor has always been yeah. selfish. Like I've never seen a good Lex Luthor. Ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So this next um character, Rain, she's a world killer. Um the world killer is a biological weapon created on Krypton, uh, but eventually outlined by the Kryptonian Science Council. Now, Rain is special because uh, during the destruction, as you will talk about it a little bit later, mm -hmm. the destruction of Krypton, five of the world killers that were created actually survived. Yep. And not knowing where they were, who they were, uh, Rain took control and basically became the leader of the world killers and fought Supergirl when she she went on a uh, basically a fact finding mission to find Krypton because she found out that she was um, her story starts on Krypton mm -hmm. and has something to do with Earth but she did not know exactly what so she goes in search of Krypton and find Krypton a dead planet uh, pretty yep. much all but destroyed yep. and in the process she basically I guess while searching out she sees Supergirl. Mm -hmm. And she confronts Supergirl and basically finds out that, you know, she doesn't believe that Supergirl is telling her everything. So when Supergirl decides to leave, she knows that she's headed to Earth. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is Rain actually beats her to Earth and starts tearing up New York City. Of course. And it's at this point in time that Kara has to step in and basically defeat Rain. And when I think one of the other, she basically brings in three of the other world killers okay. because uh, one of the world killers basically went off on its own to do its own thing. Uh, once one of the world killers was injured in the fight with Supergirl, Rain decided to pull all of her forces back mm -hmm. and they left the Earth in order to regroup. And in the comics, they had not Reattack. They they have not attacked Earth again because they are basically they they're lost beings. Basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know they don't, they don't know they, they don't have a home. They don't know what they're fighting for. Or anything. Yeah, because again, biological weapons created by our Kryptonians. Right. Again, they didn't have everything right on Krypton. They had a lot of stuff right, but not everything. All right, and she's also in the Supergirl show right. season three. Rain is the baddie. Okay, Reactron. This guy here dates back to the 80s. Um, his real name is Benjamin Krull, and he's a longtime enemy of Supergirl. Reactron uh, wears a protective suit of armor that gives him the ability to generate and project high levels of ener energy that is capable of killing a Kryptonian in one blow. 
Uh, he is known to, have, to be fully consented to be a guinea pig and a human bomb for the chance to kill Supergirl and her whole race. He has a grudge against Supergirl and her entire family and race of people. He's a sociopath, he's lecherous, he's a bully, and he's a mass murdering thug. This guy has no rhyme to his reason. Uh, all of my research on him, I was like, so you really don't have a good reason to want. No, like, it's didn't. not like they wronged him or anything no, like that. No, they wrote him in as a hateful character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like I said, he, he dates back to the 80s, and he's still, I think he's still around in yeah, the DCU. Yeah. But uh, he just no rhyme to his, like, oh, but she killed my family. <laughs> no, he's just like, can I kill a superhero? I, I think, but I, I think he, you, you can put him in the um, same group with Lex or, mm-hmm. you know. Well, see, Lex just doesn't trust. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's he, he's 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 basically. If there was a word for hating superheroes mm-hmm. and aliens, mm-hmm. that he would be one of those extremists, and that's what it, it, they, that, it's not a reason. It's just that's what he believes. Like. And, he wasn't in the Supergirl show. No. Okay. 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 But she sounds like a similar character that was like, I think, season three or season four. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. But you know, and I have to go back and look that up again, but mm-hmm. they may have brought him in and just used his regular name. Benjamin. Yeah, because like I feel like he was one of, like, when the it, DEO was being infiltrated yeah, by the He government. definitely didn't look like him. No, he, he does not. <laughs> but the powers sound familiar. Right. Like, he infiltrated the DEO. But he was part of that. Uh, they weren't who they said they were. Like they were supposed to be government people, but they were really working to undermine the alien act that had been passed and all that. All right. Good old okay. Leviathan. You know what? Let me take the next two. Okay, no problem. Leviathan, real quick. Take over, take over. Why don't you take Leviathan? Leviathan, real quick. Okay. Yeah. I'll do a uh, Leviathan. Yeah. You go ahead with World Killers. But, um, Leviathan uh, isn't also in the Supergirl TV show. It's in seasons five and six. It's the secret organization uh, that's running things behind the scenes. The little difference is, is that this Leviathan was founded by none other than Talia al Ghul. Uh, when she left her father's uh, organization of the uh, League of Assassins, uh, Leviathan's uh, she she became not that League of Assassins wasn't about doing the good for mankind. They just had selfish means for it. But it was like a anti Leviathan was created to be anti capitalist and to d- dismantle society and this new sort of new world leader type of thing. Uh, but it got a little bit out of hand and uh, <laughs> uh, Talia lost. She didn't lose control because, you know, she like literally gave her control to someone else because, and I, I did not write his name down, but um, she gave control of Leviathan to another man because her father died. Right. When her father died, he left League of Assassins to her. So she couldn't run both organizations because by that time, Leviathan had got huge. And she was like... I'm going to leave it to this guy who comes in and turns it into, uh, yeah, world, yeah, world, world conquerors, world domination. And it got out of her hand to the point where Talia even teamed up with Superman and Batman to dismantle Leviathan. But it's still around, it's just underground yeah. right now. In the TV show, Leviathan are ancient aliens that have been on Earth for millennia that have well, basically caused all of mankind's major, um, like the Great Flood and Krakatoa, yeah. you know, all well, of the world. That's stuff. what she, her whole goal was. Uh, it went on a spirit. Right. <laughs> when the new guy came on, he went in search of like artifacts and things like that. like. He truly was starting to believe, sort of like with the TV show, mm-hmm. that there were these ancient beings out there. Um, but um, yeah, it was started by Talia, and uh, she she was trying to get back to a simpler, you know, yeah. agreed is not. Although it's really odd that she would lead that because her dad has been around and alive for. He's weird. Though. He's yeah. really weird because his his whole goal is not to. 
well, his whole goal is to conquer. But remember, they always had that contention between them, and it was really a family thing because mm-hmm. she was like, "You like, I, I know we're not supposed to care about family like this, but these are the ones that were supposed to be the leader, like mm-hmm. the family." And whatever, whatever it was, her father was doing in the um, what storyline was that? It was a Batman storyline. She's she's basically stepped out on her dad. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I don't believe in what you're doing, but then he ends up gaining control, like you said, mm-hmm. of the whole thing. Of something she didn't believe in anymore. Yeah, because she undermined him. He wanted Batman to take over the League of Assassins. That's why he kidnapped him in the first place. I think in the 70s, mm-hmm. when he was first was his first introduced, he kidnapped Batman because he felt he was the perfect being to be the next leader of the League of Assassins. Not his daughters. Right. <laughs> he had two daughters. Not those seven. She then sided with Batman and it was always a contention between her and her dad after that because she basically saved Batman's life because he was like, well, if you're not going to lead my League of Assassins, right. then I will kill you. Mm-hmm. And she you know, left him and did her own thing, then her dad later on leaves everything to her. But that could be because of the fact that she had an heir with Batman right. who was Damien. Right. Yeah. Which she got ill. ill well, they even said that in the storyline that that's, that's the reason why he was choosing Batman. That's a matter of fact. They were, that's what she was mad about, mm-hmm. was Batman being chosen over her. Mm-hmm. Then she fell in love with Batman, and then right. she uh, stole his essence to Very create a child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stole his essence to create a child. The, yeah, she was like, "So you drugged me? I did not know I had a kid." Oh, okay, great. Right. Not problematic. All right, all right. Our next. Okay, so we spoke Back about Wayne earlier. <laughs> so this this is a picture of the world killers. The world killer killers were biological weapons, like we said before, created by Kryptonian scientists. Um, most of them were genetic, genetically modified alien species, with at least one world killer being a symbiotic parasite, and that was um, the one that's titled World Killer One. <laughs> okay. Um, five world killers survived the demise of Krypton. And, but they woke up some while after the planetary cataclysm, knowing nothing but their names or their purpose or their origin. And this, this is when Rain became their leader. Now, uh, one of the things that in the comics, the world killers were actually created by the scientific team that was led by Supergirl's father. Oh, yeah, from uh, Argo. So um, that's, that's one of the ways... That's, that's one of the reasons why Rain went after what well, she knew about the uh, the Earth Krypton <laughs> connection and the world world killer one. Mm-hmm. He basically, after they basically started searching the cosmos to find their origins, mm-hmm. after a while he decided that he he found his goal and what his goal was to make other species stronger. So what he would do, because he could, um, he it was a symbiotic parasite, mm-hmm. much like uh, Marvel's uh, Venom. Yeah. Basically, what he did, he overtook the king of this sentient species of warfaring. Um, they were reptilian, mm-hmm. but he t- he took them over. They were called the. Um, I just saw the name is on the tip of my tongue. Uh, the diaspora, yeah. the, the diaspora, like mm. like how we talk about the diaspora. Okay. These were the, the diasporans or okay. something of that nature. And when you go back and look it up, you'll see that what he did, he basically infested the king, mm-hmm. took over his armies, and then struck out across the um, yes. cosmos yeah. to try to uh, subjugate other you know, other societies. Okay. Um, then there was another storyline where, and actually this is the storyline that they tried to... The TV show. I, I guess they tried to carry it over into the TV show and kind of change it. Mm-hmm. But where Rain, um, when Rain first realized yeah. that she didn't know what was going on, 
a religious order tried to take advantage of her. Mm -hmm. And she basically um, smoked them oh, yeah. right, yeah. right where they stood. But in the TV show, what they did, they made it seem like uh, the world killers, instead of being created by Kryptonian scientists mm -hmm. alone, they were created by Kryptonian scientists and Kryptonian dark magic. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they were left in limbo until the time that they were needed mm -hmm. to basically come back and basically make sure that Krypton, that Krypton, Krypton reigns supreme, basically, ah, in the universe. Right. So in a TV show, this is where they come. You have a cult on Earth mm -hmm. who's trying to bring forth the world killer, the world killers, but who they bring forth first is reign. And that's in the TV show yeah. drops off from there. Gotcha. All right. All right, and last on the list is the Fatal Five. The Fatal Five <laughs> are villains, but they did not start off as villains. They were created in the 31st century. Uh, the Legion of Superheroes is responsible for their creation. So um, this powerful, when a powerful sun eater threatened the galaxy, the Legion, knew that it was something too big for them to face alone so while watching uh, a science police documentary called On the Fatal Five, five of the universe's most vile criminals, the Legion decided to bring them on to help defeat the Sun Eater. Although they helped the Legion win the day, the villains decided to stay together as a team and have been a thorn in the Legion side ever since. Uh, the primary members of this team is Emerald Empress. Uh, she's yeah. not on this particular picture because the team, like any of the teams in any uh, comic, or uh, is ever entertaining. But the original was Emerald Empress, Mono, the, the Persuader, the Persuader, and Therok and Vladis. Uh, other members have filled in from the founding five, uh, but despite them operating primarily in the 31st century time frame, the Fatal Five have also wrecked havoc in other historical time periods, facing off against the likes of the All-Star Squadron, the Justice League, the Outsiders, and many more. Uh, I think there's a, uh, in Justice League, the original animated series, or Justice League, um, it, mm -hmm. these, these guys come up a lot. The five. Um, and they will never rest until they brought the Legion and the, and the entire United Planets to their knees. Um, Supergirl teamed up with uh, one of my favorite characters, and I hope we get to cover them. The okay. Female Furies. Oh, okay. she, she, in the 80s, she teamed up with them to fight the Fatal Five because they, they'd be a great... Um, Nemesis for Legion of Superhero, <laughs> like uh, Legends, Legends. Yeah. They would be great because they time hop and yeah. they they would mess up the timeline. Great. But I know Legends is kind of going down this alien path now. Yeah. I don't know what next season is going to be. We'll find out next month because season seven premieres. <laughs> even though season six is, I don't think season six is even over yet, but <laughs> season seven <laughs> premieres in October. Oh, wow. And like, you know, they did the hiatus yeah. and they'd already filmed it. But so they it must played. be a half like They do, you know, they do half seasons, but uh, they would be a great legends. Uh, yeah. this, this Sun Eater, I just saw this on a DC show. I'm not sure which one it was. I know. Was I think, it Starter? No. no, I think Constantine had something to do with it. Like, yeah. It was in his house or something <laughs> hidden in his house. It was a baby though. Yeah, but it got too big. <laughs> trying to figure out a way to. I can see that down. though, because like I said, it is something from the 31st century, and because of because of the time hopping that not only the uh, Legion do, right, but also these guys do too. The Fatal Five. So yeah. It may have been in Legends. Was it kind of Legends? Yeah. May, yeah. Oh, you know what? It may have because uh, <laughs> Bishop yeah. may have had his yeah. Hand. Which, yeah. So the Fatal Five, great uh, villain team. Uh, they've popped up, like I said, on Justice League um, and Justice League Unlimited. But uh, Supergirl fought them alongside the female Furies, Big Barda and all of them. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, oh, we have some other media here. So not only do you have here uh, Supergirl CW show, which is in its final season and ending in a few weeks, like in the next month or so, we're in the final few episodes, if anybody's keeping up with it. Last season, um, we're going to see where this leads. Um, and even though Lena Luther is a character in the comics, actually, no, she is she in the comics? Who? Lena Luther. Uh, I, I did my research. I, she did come up as a cyborg character, but she's not big time. She was back to the Yeah. yeah. She's been hyped up more on the TV shows like yeah. than she has been actually in the comics because, uh, yeah. So the son here was on a Superman. So it might have been Lois and Superman. Somebody released it from the Fortress of Solitude as a baby. Oh, okay. He kept it in the Fortress of Solitude okay. and he had to feed it. Mm. <laughs> it might have been one of the cartoons. It might have been one of the TV shows. I cannot remember. Yeah. I, remember. I, could, I, I could see that. I could see that. Um, yeah, but Lena Luther is not a big issue in the comics, but in TV, she's popped up on, of course, she's on Supergirl. Oh. But she's also been in Smallville. Okay, hold on. The Sun Eater has popped up in Supergirl season four, Stand and Deliver, and season five in two episodes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I actually watched season five, so I'll have to go back and look at that. Um, so yeah, you have that is current one that's ending next month. Uh, you also have um, Supergirl from Smallville there. Um, That's the third picture? Yep. Okay. She was, she landed in Smallville, just like uh, the sort of or, origin story of her. She's like, <laughs> she resented, this Supergirl resented Clark because she's older than him, but <laughs> technically they're the same age when she lands in Smallville. Uh, she was only on the last two seasons and she would only pop up every once in a while. She wasn't a series regular. Uh, you have, of course, Helen Slater from the 19th. Oh boy. The the, the, the camp movie. classic. The camp classic Supergirl. It's a hard movie to watch. Huh? She also, <laughs> Helen Slater, pops up on CW Supergirl a lot because she plays Mrs. Danvers, uh, Alex and Carl's mom. She is, that is the same Helen Slater. <laughs> and they kind of recycle, like, uh, they recycle her dad, Dean Kane, who right. played Superman in Lois and Clark for three years. Yeah. And then you have Justice League Unlim Justice League and Justice League Unlimited Supergirl uh, there. She is Cars around uh, the original. Um, so yeah. And of course, I'm sure she I didn't put her up here, but then you have the Flash movie Supergirl oh, played yeah. by Sasha. Um, say her name Sasha Colada, but uh, she is Hispanic, mm -hmm. and so uh, she is going to be, uh, according to sources, she will be Supergirl, or which is Cersei. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, but that is her in other media, and that's all we have for today, folks. Short, another short episode for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to check out some of our research we did, these are all of the places we went and things we dived into. Um, just to mention again, uh, if you are looking for new comics or you're looking for old comics to read, check out Comics Plus, which is digital comics that you can check out and have at your fingertips on your smart device, whether it be your tablet, your computer, or your phone. And I just wanted to highlight that this month, Comics Plus is, uh, has um, mental health matters. So a lot of comics dealing, nonfiction comics dealing with mental health. This is Suicide Prevention Month, uh, the month of September. So uh, yeah, check it out. This pandemic has been hard on everybody and especially on students. So if you're looking for some stuff and things uh, by age level that can help you deal with your mental health, check that out. Uh, but you do have to have a Clayton County library card to do that. So uh, yeah, come by and get your Clayton County library card. If you don't live in the state, I'm sorry. 
Go check out your local library and see if they have something similar. What are we doing next, Roland? Ooh, I do believe next up will be Hispanic American Heroes of DC and Marvel coming to you September 28th at yes. 4 p.m. Yes, and that time, uh, this episode had to be pre-recorded uh, due to some unforeseen events, so that happens sometimes, so it didn't air live today, but it, it will be recorded and it will be on YouTube later on. This one should be live, but if not, still check us out on YouTube. Hispanic American Heritage Month starts tomorrow, the 15th. So tune in on the 28th with us. Should be an interesting episode. We'll catch you guys later.